Hi again, David here with my second video for this series about Astro Imaging Equipment. On my previous video, I talked about some of the differences between the different telescopes and also about the types of targets in Astro Imaging. If you haven't watched it already, please do, as it covers some very important basics. Although there's much more to discuss about the OTAs themselves and the different optic components, I wanted to provide a set of videos that will cover a good starting point for any beginner from end to end. A complete equipment beginner's guide to get started with astrophotography. So in this video I want to focus on mounts and other tracking solutions for long and short exposures, planets and deep sky objects. Not to worry though, I will cover more advanced aspects of optical components on my next videos. Ok, so let's get started. In order to understand what type of tracking systems we need for whichever target we want to capture, we need to go back to the differences between the different target types. As mentioned in my previous video, there are essentially three target types, which are deep sky targets, planetary targets and solar targets. From a tracking perspective, planetary and solar are pretty much the same, so for the sake of this video, we'll call both of these planetary targets. So let's start with that. For planetary, what kind of data do we need to gather in order to get the best possible result? As mentioned before, planets are very bright compared to deep sky targets, so exposure is not an issue, and small movements of the scope won't create trailing or smearing. On the other hand, they require a lot of magnification, as they have a very small angular size. Angular size meaning the size which they appear to us here on Earth. So our main challenge is magnification and resolution, and therefore we want a huge amount of images and a high capture FPS to stack together and average out the atmospheric turbulence. I want to state that I will not go into the imaging process itself just yet. There is much more to know about those targets themselves to understand exactly why we need this type of data acquisition. So before we jump into that, we first need to complete our imaging rig with the right components. All that's important for now is that for planetary imaging we do not need long exposures because of the high brightness of the planets and therefore a simple equatorial or alt azimuth mount such as this one will be sufficient. This alt azimuth allows live tracking of the movements of the sky in a somewhat accurate rate with very low intervention. Also any equatorial mount that is properly polar aligned can do the same with quite ease. By the way auto guiding which is the act of sending periodic corrections from a computer to the mount can also help if your mount doesn't track perfectly but usually for planetary you'll be fine without it unless you're trying to do either a long time-lapse video which requires taking a lot of videos of a planet during several hours or you're imaging deep space objects that requires a very accurate tracking with minimal to zero drift. That is because long exposures can create trailing and smearing effects if the image is moving during an exposure. Ok, so let's talk about deep space imaging, DSO for short. What type of data is needed for DSOs? As mentioned in my previous video, DSOs have a larger angular size than planets, but they are very dim, so high frame rate is impossible as long exposures are needed to gather data. There are two issues that arise when using long exposures. One, the Earth is rotating, so that means the sky is moving, and if you aren't moving exactly at the same rate, the object would drift and there will be trailing. 2. The sky is moving according to the axis of rotation of the Earth, and we can't use altitude and azimuth tracking for long exposures, or this will change the object's orientation in the frame, that will also lead to trailing. So because issue number 2 can only be resolved with equatorial tracking, alt azimuth mounts can be used for long exposures unless you are using an icky wedge which essentially turns an alt azimuth mount into an equatorial mount. After a proper alignment, a good equatorial mount can track the sky very accurately and will require very few and small periodic corrections from a computer. An equatorial mount can move in two axes, RA and DEC. RA stands for right ascension and is the axis in which the Earth rotates. DEC stands for the declination axis which is perpendicular to the right ascension axis and is the distance from the celestial equator to objects north or south of it. Declination is measured in degrees from the celestial equator, so the edges are 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. But right ascension is measured in hours since the Earth does a full rotation every 24 hours. 
For example, the Andromeda Galaxy sits at a right ascension of 0 hours 42 minutes 44.3 seconds and a declination of positive 41 degrees 16 minutes and 9 seconds. Like everything else in this field, there's a wide range of equatorial mounts you can buy. From a cheap RA axis tracking only that can carry 11 pounds, to a very expensive and huge mounts that can track both RA and DAC axes for hours and require almost no corrections from a computer. So let's talk about this first mount. This one is called a Skyguider Pro and it's manufactured by a company called iOptron. It's a very simple mount head that can be attached to any conventional camera tripod. First thing we need to do to set up any equatorial mount is polar alignment, which means aligning the RA axis to point right at the North Celestial Pole near the North Star. After that, just attach any camera to it and balance it using the included weights and you're ready to go. It has an internal battery that can last a full night of imaging, so there's no need to connect it to an external power source. It guides only on the RA axis and I mostly use it for Milky Way imaging or a very wide field of view deep space imaging. If you have a DSLR, you can leave this in the field to auto capture an entire night without touching it. Next we have this alt azimuth mount, which comes with this cool and simple Newtonian telescope. I've used it a lot for planetary and solar imaging when I started. It's a very simple to use mount, which makes this a very good starting point if you want to do some planetary imaging. It's also pretty accurate, provided that you insert the right parameters in the remote control and did a fair star alignment. Anyway, as good as it is for planetary imaging, it can't carry much weight, and as mentioned before, it cannot be used for deep space. So let's move over to my main imaging mount, which is this one. It's an AVX mount made by Celestron, and for its price, it's considered to be a very good equatorial mount. Just like with the Skyguider, you need to carefully balance it using these weights. It's done properly, it has a very good and accurate tracking. All we need now is to position it pointing to the North Star and align it using either a pole finder scope, which sits here, or via a software that can help figuring out where we need to move the mount in order to be aligned. One of the videos in this series will be all about useful tips, and in it I'll show how to pull and align in less than 30 seconds using a laser pointer. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified. As for guiding corrections, I usually connect this mount to a computer using a USB cable to send small auto guiding corrections using a software called PHD to make it track even better. I'll talk more on PHD in a future video about data acquisition. This is by no means the best mount out there. There are a lot of things that can affect tracking and auto guiding, such as backlash, periodic errors and tracking speeds, but that's out of the scope of this video and we'll leave that for a future one. So. As for this AVX mount, you might say that you'd expect me to use a more expensive one. But as you'll see in the upcoming tutorials, getting good results is mostly experience and knowing which areas are the right ones to invest your resources, time and money. So for now, it's good, it's cheap, and as you can see by my videos and images, it gets the job done. I don't promise not to upgrade in the future though. There are many more aspects to cover to understand why and how the more expensive mounts are better than this one. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, I want to cover the very basics from end to end to help you get started. So I hope I've shed some light on this subject. And if you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if this did in fact help you, please consider subscribing, as I'm planning much more of these videos for the near future. Thank you all and I'll see you next time. Cheers.